is this a budget solution when it comes to cooling CPUs and you want a dual tower only one way to find out now let's go over some specs first we have the compatibility on the Intel side we have the LGA 1150X socket 1200 socket 1700 socket 2011 and 2066 sockets and on the AMD side we have the AM4 platform and as you see AMD Ryzen 7000 series this is AM5 socket now just a heads up if you have the AMD 7000 series and you want to buy something better don't buy the Duracroc Pro 5 as it does a lot worse than this one does and that one costs at least two times more now I'm showing you the Phantom Spirit 120 without the SE this is what the top covers look like these are magnetic so you can simply pull them out now let's take a look at the product description they also have those written on the box but most of the details are taped off so you have the dimensions mostly you will be considering the height this is 157 the weight without the fans this one is the upgraded version from the Assassin's as this one has 7 heat pipes and this is the dimension of the fan so it's a standard fan and you can also replace it as it has a standard height and these fans too have the Sony fluid dynamic bearing bearing now with this CPU cooler you have 4 versions the Phantom Spirit 120 EVO Phantom Spirit 120 the SE RGB and the SE and this is the one that I have and let's go check the height because it might be a bit different it is for a whopping 3 millimeters lower but if you are very limited by the height then maybe even 3 millimeters will help otherwise the stats are the same as with these two this one obviously being the RGB if you want a little bit more subtle RGB you can get this one and the pricing on Amazon at least in the US $35 this one is $36 let's see this one is the standard one do they have an EVO one and if you want an EVO one it's $43 so this is very cheap for what we'll be getting the only thing that I didn't see let's go to the description do we have any info on the TDP? We do not. I'll see if there is any mention on the box or inside the box. So we don't have any mention of the TDP. And now let's open this copy up. So on the left side we have two fans, normal black fans, four pins, with PWM signal they have rubber contacts on the sides you can take these out but they should help with vibrations so we have two of those then inside here we'll have the heatsink and all the peripherals so let's take a look at those so we have the clips for the fans we have four of those I guess this was already opened am I missing something? I hope not so this is for the AM4 and AM5 platform which is what I'm missing then we have here for the 1700 this is for Intel and 1150X and 1200 again for Intel maybe they just fell out I'll see then we have the brackets one is for Intel probably one for AMD so on this side it does say AM4 so these are for the AMD and luckily I do see four screws and four big washers for the AM4 and AM5 platform so nothing is missing I just don't know why it was opened 
And here we have two brackets for the installation. Both of them were for the Intel system. This one is LGA 1150X or 1200. And this one is for LGA 1700. It's not much of a difference, but there is a difference between the two. And lastly, we have this connector and this is for plugging in the two fans. So this is where the two fans go and this header goes into the motherboard header. And lastly, we have the big heatsink. So let's take a look at the fins. The fins are usually bent a little bit. This one is. We have a little of a bend here. Now that's to be expected, but you know, we can always check what the quality is like. So let's take a look at the screws. We have easy access to those. So that is one thing that is nice. The plate is already on and screwed in. So the installation looks to be easy. Now what you can notice is that on both sides we have the same gap. This is for the memory sticks. So we should have enough clearance, hopefully. Now if we take a look at it in this direction, you can see that it's not symmetrical. If you have the case on the top, like so, you can position it in this way, but you could also position it in this way. So you move it a little bit up away from the GPU on the bottom. And this can also help with the installation depending on what kind of PC case you chose and the components that you have. Now I'm not really particularly a fan of this. It doesn't have any protection on the bottom and it also seems like it has some scratches. As you can see there was no cover on this plate. Usually you have some and now we have some scratches. They may not look much but they also may affect performance. On each corner we also have a scratch. So what this tells me is that this is actually used. Now I wouldn't mind these tiny scratches here but I can actually feel two deep scratches right here. And that is not good because it can damage the CPU. Uh-huh, you see those two tiny dots? Those two tiny dots can cause damage to the CPU. So that leads me to believe this is actually used, someone used it on the AM4 or AM5 platform. And that is why this package was also already opened. Now lastly, let's take a look at the instructions. This is some kind of a warranty. Now let's see if it shows any kind of sticker on the heatsink. In the previous video, the heatsink did have a sticker and it also came with a tube of thermal paste, which this does not, or at least it should, but I didn't get any. So this is definitely used. Now while it doesn't show a sticker, this is used and how I know that, this was opened, this is missing, and the heatsink is damaged. So while this CPU cooler may be the best in its budget when it comes to two towers, well, if you don't have any thermal paste, you can't use it, and most importantly, because the heatsink is damaged, you can damage your CPU. Now, if you want to see a review how this CPU cooler performs on Ryzen 5600, I'm not positive I'll have it, because I don't really want to put this on my CPU. But if I do make the video, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss it. And we'll do something else in the next video.